So welcome back to part two of Tips with the Graph Editor inside Blender. In this short episode, I wanna talk about a few more hotkeys that you need to know as an animator, as well as some copy and pasting. We'll go in about uh, flipping your handles, so mirroring the handles when you copy and paste or uh, manipulate them. Sometimes the handles don't mirror, so there's a workaround uh, for that. As well as uh, the pivot points, you need to know how to manipulate the pivot point to, so Blender does exactly what you want. And also using your 2D cursor inside the uh, inside the uh, graph editor. All right, let's take a look. So the two most important hotkeys you need to know for the graph editor are the V key and the T key. What do they do? They control your interpolation type and your vector handles. So I have all these keys selected in the graph editor. And if I wanted to change the type, the interpolation type, we use the T key, hit T. And then if you are the graph editor, please look away now. This is a trigger warning because I'm gonna change everything to constant. Boo! Trigger warning. Uh, if you wanted to change back to Bezier, you would do that. That works individually on each other key. So if I wanted to, whoops, change that to constant, there we go. So that's something that you probably never want to do, but um, that's how you do it with the T key. Now with the V key, you're actually changing your handle. So what you can do is I'm going to box select these guys down here, hit V to change the vector handle, and then change these to actually be vector. And now my bouncing monkey, what monkey? Hang on a sec, fixed it. Now my bouncing ball uh, has some nice sharp corners there. So it looks more like a bouncing ball. So that's how the T key and the V key works. T, interpolation type, V, vector handle. Now as a bonus tip, those actual uh, same hotkeys work inside any of the other animation editors. So if I select my keyframes here and hit T, I can change the interpolation type, or I can hit V and change the vector handle type. Whoa. If you're moving stuff around the viewport, uh, make sure you constrain it to an axis. So in 3D, we have three axes, X, Y, and um, Z. In the graph editor, it's only two directions. So we've got the X, which is horizontal, and the Y is uh, is up. So if we want to constrain it to uh, only move horizontally, we can activate that with G, so I can move it around anywhere, but I don't want to do that. I want to constrain it. I can hit X, and that's going to constrain it to the horizontal axis. If I hit Y, so G, Y, it's going to move it up and down. That's a really easy way of um, controlling your keyframes. Also, uh, you can do the same thing with the keyboard. So if I hit G and then if I'm moving my mouse in any direction and then I hit the middle mouse, it's going to activate that uh, constraining on that axis. So make sure that you do that. Uh, I prefer using the, uh, the mouse because my hand's already there. Now the graph editor has a pivot point, just like in 3D. So up here, we've got our little menu here. We've got our bounding box center, our 2D cursors, and our individual centers. You can also bring it up with the uh, shortcut, which is the period on the keyboard. And the, there you go, you've got bounding box, individual centers, and 2D cursor. Now you need to know what does what, because uh, when you're manipulating keyframes, you, you need to know what you're doing. So I'm just gonna select all of my keyframes here. What if I wanted to? change all of our top ones there. So I just lasso select, and I'm going to make sure that we're on individual centers. So now when I scale these, these handles are going to move uh, all the same way, the way that I want. And that works with the rotation. So I hit R and rotate them out, and then I can rotate them like that. And yeah, it's gonna work like that. If I had the bounding box center, if I hit S and scale it down there, uh, it's gonna to scale to the bounding box, which is not what we want. Uh, let's take a look at the 2D cursor, because sometimes it's really handy to scale around the cursor. That is this horizontal blue line. You'll notice that it's moving around here. That's our 2D cursor. We can actually make it uh, invisible by clicking this button here, which is in the view tab. If this is invisible for you, just push the N key, N for properties, and that will show up there. It's also in the view tab, so view, uh, show cursor, but what what we can do is, let's just uh, enable it. I wanna scale all the uh, these top ones, so I'm gonna select them again. So let's so select, zoom, select those ones, and I'm gonna scale them all down uh, to the cursor, but if we're at the cursor at the moment, it's gonna scale it like that. So I want to, I can manipulate my cursor to actually go down to the ground. So let's just type in our value here to zero, and then I'm gonna uh, use a combination of scaling and uh, constraining to the Y axis, so S, Y, and then I can uh, shrink these all down. So now my bouncing ball is a little bit shorter. So that's uh, something you might do. If you wanted to um, use a shortcut, you can actually just um, uh, select one key and this cursor to selection is going to um, activate this cursor on that point. There's a keyboard shortcut for that as well, which is Control G. So I'll just show you. If I select that key and hit Control G, it's going to snap that cursor to to that point. So that's what you might want to do. You might want to go, okay, Control G, snap it there, then um, select. Whoops, you don't want to do that. You want to snap it there, Control G, and then you want to deselect, select all the things that you want, change, whoop, and then scale Y, whoom, and do it do it that way. So there's some alternate ways of scaling to the cursor, uh, combining with constraining. 
All right, let's take a look at uh, manipulating the, the tangents on the handles, right? So I actually, what if I wanted to scale these in and uh, keep the, hand, the tangents the same? We can do that with uh, individual centers. So we just make sure it's on that and we scale it. So we've got our vector handles there. Although when we change it, it's no longer vector, it's uh, become a manual free handle. But you can learn all about that in the, uh, in the fundamentals of animation on CG Cookie Plug. If you want to scale these uh, towards each other, that's where you use individual centers, but you scale, uh, you constrain it on the x-axis. So scale towards each other, which is going to go to the middle, and then hit X to constrain it on the X uh, channel there. That also works with the other things. So if I wanted to go um, G and then constrain on the X, I can go boing, boing, create myself a Newton's, Newton's cradle. There we go. Hey, I'm hypnotized. Uh, so there is a way of using the inbuilt smoothing function inside the graph editor. I'm not talking about the animate um, add-on, which is a very handy way of uh, manipulating curves. This is all just inbuilt in this video that I'm talking about. So I'm going to select these uh, keyframes here. Say this is really dodgy animation, which it is. I want to smooth it out. So we select that section and we make sure that our start and our end, they, they're going to be pinned. So they're not going to move, but everything in the middle is going to uh, be smoothed out. So I'm going to hit Alt-O and repeat that process just by keep pushing it and it's going to smooth it out. So there we go. Uh, no need for an add-on, just put Alt-O. Here's another way of uh, manipulating your keyframes. Say if I have this section here and I wanted to blend it to this neighbor, something that you might do in blocking stages quite often. You change a value and then you need to propagate it on one channel. So uh, what you can do is just hit the, the plus and the minus on the keyboard, was actually the, the minus and the equals. If you hit the minus, it's going to um, shift it towards the, the neighbor on the left. If you hit the plus, it's going to shift it towards the neighbor on the right. Now, if you wanted to snap it there, just hold down the shift key and then push the, the minus, which will give you the underscore really. And then if you wanted to snap it to the right neighbor, that is the shift and the, and the plus, which will snap it that, that direction. Now do check out the Animade uh, add-on, which is free. It's on GitHub. Uh, it's got a lot more functions than the built-in ones in Blender, but that's not what this video is about. Here's another snapping tip. If you wanted to say snap it to a, the cursor value, you can do that. So um, I've just got my cursor value here and I hit the, I can bring up the snapping menu with shift S and then I can snap these values, which I have selected to the cursor value. But you'll notice what's happened to the handles here. This can happen when you've got manual handles and all you're snapping things around. If it ever gets crazy like this, just have a look in the, um, the same menu and you've got flattened handles here. So bang, that's gonna flatten out your handles. Uh, also, there's another way of doing that if, I'll just undo, if, uh, because these were manual handles, if I hit um, V and just turn them back to say auto clamp and then turn them back to aligned, uh, that's one way of, of fixing it, uh, just by changing the type and it's gonna fix it. Now you can actually copy a curve and paste it into another channel, which can actually speed things up. Um, you know, copy and pasting and then editing it as, as you go or offsetting it for different, different body parts. And you can do that either the whole entire range or just individual keyframes. But I'll show you what I mean here. I'm just gonna select everything uh, on our uh, X channel here. So I'm gonna hit link select and then I'm gonna copy with Control C or Apple C if you're on my computer. And then let's paste that over our Z channel here. So I'm gonna hit Control uh, V and you can see that he has pasted those keys frames in there, but it's left the old ones there. We can actually change that with the undo panel. We can actually see, uh, we've got some options here. We, do we want it to paste at the start or the end? You can see what effect that's had. So I can change, actually just zoom out here. You can see that it's pasted the end frame. So it's everything shifted to the left. So I'll just change that back here. Or, and the, the type, how are we gonna insert these keys? Are we gonna mix them together? Are we gonna overwrite the whole entire uh, animation? So if you had keyframes before and after, they're now gone. Uh, or shall we just um, overwrite the, the um, the, the range of what we're working with or overwrite the whole entire range. So there's many different options there for many different circumstances. Check them out. So there is a way to mirror the handles. So maybe you've copied uh, the pose from one side of the body and you've pasted the mirrored version over to the other side and you'll notice that your handles don't work um, correctly. Now bear in mind if it's an automatic handle it will uh, automatically figure out the, uh, the the new position it's meant to be but if you've got a manual handle like this silly example here um, you have to do it manually. So the way we do that so just select your keyframe make sure you've got the playhead on the current frame so we're, we're, we're doing doing that and then we bring up our mirror menu with control M. We've got uh, it's a little bit confusing we've got times and we've got values all right so the time it should say time, not times, is uh, the horizontal axis, because that is our frame number or our time, and the value is the up and down, the vertical axis. So we need to figure out what we want to do. In this example, I want to flip 
um, the handle so that the short one is on the other side. So we want to flip it over time, right? So let's go Control M, flip time over current frame. So bang, now we've got our short handle on that side and our long handle on the other side. Now if you needed to flip it vertically, uh, it's a little bit more cumbersome, but what you need to do is snap your cursor to that value, hit Control M, and then choose flip the value, because that is the up and down, over the cursor value, which was your 2D cursor. And then bang, you've got your, um, they're facing the opposite direction, as in up and down, but you've still got the, the short handle on the right hand side. So no more like flipping it and then going, oh, I need to adjust my handles and uh, do it manually. Now you're gonna get exactly the values that you want for the mirrored side of the body. And don't forget to repeat that for every keyframe or every manual keyframe that you need to mirror those handles. Pain in the butt, I know. So there we go. Hopefully you found that video uh, helpful. Maybe you learned a trick or two about the graph editor. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, you can check out more content on cgcookie.com. But other than that, cool. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye.